The nostalgia of the small town I was born in finally caught up with me. The 10 day trip started June 13, 2013. Destination Rome, Italy. We will land at Aeroporto Leonardo da Vinci. Picked up a rental car and passing Leonardo's statue. Driving south 56 miles to Monte San Giovanni Campano. It is a municipality of about 12,800 people at this time. It is part of the province of Frosinone in the region of Lazio. My home was just five minutes south of the town called La Luca. Today we will tour the 11th century fortress that dominates the town. The castle is best known as the place where St. Thomas Aquinas was imprisoned by his family from 1240 to 1242 in an attempt to persuade him not to join the Dominican order. It's been 34 years I hadn't seen this castle. I used to play around in here, in this area. My school was just beneath the hill. And so far, I'm looking at the entrance and it didn't change at all. It was also a summer residence of Pope Adrian IV. Starting in 1155 AD. Most of the artwork we will be seeing in the castle was either uh, collected or refurbished by the uh, Mancini family. Luigi Mancini was the owner from 1942 to late 1960s. He was a doctor that bought the castle from the city, I believe it was, and um, he decided to, and he did most of the renovations, all the towers, that everything that you see renovated, all the cement and all the uh, rebuilding of the walls that were ruined by the 1915 earthquake. Today, it's Large Room's house, the restaurant Corte Davalos, which is run by the new owners, the Mastrantonio family, since 1990 when they purchased the property. All the income made from the restaurant is spent for restorations. Most of my memories of this place are past this gate into the courtyard on top of the walls of the castle. Many fun memories are here of my father bringing me and the castle keeper, which was Signor Carlo Mancini, the brother of Dr. Luigi Mancini, which owned the castle. The marble statue of the hunter with bow and arrows and his dog is still here. The familiar coat of arms everywhere. And the terrace overlooking towards the south where we could almost see my house.
Also in my memories is my elementary school, just below the hill from the castle. I would be looking out the window of my classroom and see the pentagonal tower and the wall of the fortress. Lots of daydreaming. Behind the pentagonal tower is the consecrated chapel. The altar has a beautiful sculpture of St. Thomas Aquinas surrounded by angels. As you see, the frescoes on the walls are still under renovation. The way I remember this well is that there was an arch over it and there was uh, an iron cover over the top and, and, a, and a monkey, a live monkey, was tied on a leash over it and the leash would be tied to the arch, the iron arch that was over it. This round tower was always a mystery to me. It's outside the walls of the castle, but I always felt it should have been part of the castle because maybe of the stone material and the round shape. But no one could ever tell me who it belonged to, what it was for, or anything. The statue on the fountain was um, added on by the Mancini family. Uh, it's a chuchada with the, with the usual water base, was, which was very common in that era. This is the palace of, let's say today, the Mancini family uh, did a beautiful job renovating this. And uh, it's between the St. Thomas prison and uh, which chapel actually and the um, pentagonal tower which is always the front entrance we'll be going in and taking a nice uh, tour I will tell you a story about this piano when we get upstairs it's a very interesting story They do many weddings here since um, they renovated these large halls. Every window has a breathtaking scenery. There's also a bar for entertainment. The large dining room with this large table, it's a very old table, that sits 26 people.
The painting on the table itself was, is very well preserved and it's kept covered. A number of motion pictures were filmed in this room and around this castle, but uh, no one ever kept track of the titles of the films, unfortunately. I remember this pool. This was such a beautiful pool with blue water. It's situated on the south side of the castle, right next to the uh, palace. I remember the dog going up and down the wall. Big German Shepherd. There's the church bell tower. large picture window overlooking the south of the castle right on the stairway landing the marble stairs the painting of Dr. Luigi Mancini which was the owner of the castle This is the piano that was downstairs in the place of the one we saw there, and which was owned by a very famous musician, which I don't know his name, but his initials were M. And that's why Dr. Mancini bought his furniture at an auction and uh, placed it in the castle. So everything you see with an M it belonged to this famous musician, which I don't remember his name. Dr. Mancini was quite a art collector. Um, he collected many paintings, he collected a lot of furniture, and there used to be an ARP, I remember a huge ARP, I wonder what happened to that. Uh, the uh, guy that we have said he'd never seen one, that probably was uh, taken away by someone during the time it was abandoned. Back in the gardens, you can see some of the restorations that are going on with statues. It's very beautiful. Walking towards the square tower which at the base of the tower is the, uh, the jail where St. Thomas of Aquinas was imprisoned, and which is now a chapel, of course. You can see the remnants to the right of the old original palace, which used to be five stories high but uh, a few earthquakes decimated about two of the floors, actually three of the floors. The last earthquake was in 1915.
Above this arch is the entrance to the prison. The wall around the castle, which is a double wall, it still could be seen very clearly. An entrance to the old prison. This is the subterranean uh, dungeons, which is not accessible at this time. The square tower can be seen through this gate. It's over 20 meters and the entrance is midway up. The rooms in which Thomas Aquinas had been held are at the base of the rectangular tower. The rooms in which Thomas Aquinas had been held was saved and restored. His cell now holds a 16th century Neapolitan tropic. The room behind this barricaded door is where St. Thomas of Aquinas was rescued. He went down a window with a rope helped by Seventeenth, two 2004, Cardinal Ratzinger, which became the Pope Benedict, visited St. Thomas of Aquinas Chapel. Although a devotee of St. Augustine rather than of Thomas, Cardinal Ratzinger showed great interest in this historic monument. The owner of the castle, Signor Mastrantoni, presented the Cardinal with the gift of a pectoral. This is uh, the gate entrance of St. Thomas into the courtyard. Another sample of the double wall and another look at the ruins of the old palace. Well, we found a nice little hidden garden. Now we will be visiting the interior of the pentagonal tower.
There was a small surprise when we walked into the uh, pentagonal main entrance. They had um, some champagne ready and they wanted to do a cheer for the big tour and the big comeback for me, I guess, which I really truly appreciate it. Many thanks to the Maestro Antonio family. And above all, thank you to my family that made all the arrangements for me and my son to see this great treasure and bringing back so many fun memories. Last great find was the famous bookcase, a gift from the Windsor family to uh, the owner of the castle during the mid 1800s. And the hand carvings represent different famous fables popular in Europe in that era. For example, Puss in Boots, Jack and the Beanstalk. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and uh, Hansel and Gretel. With the They're all carved on there. Yeah, it's lit. Going up the stairs to the uh, second story of the tower. And this ends the tour of this beautiful castle with lots of memories of my childhood. It's beautiful art. Lots of history here as well. Not too many people know about this place. But to recap on this castle's history. So the castle is distinguished by two towers. One quadrangular and the other is a pentagonal. The pentagonal shape is very unusual in castles of this type. It's only one of its kind in Italy, from what I understand. There are remnants of a larger defensive structure that once included five towers and walls that entirely enclosed a ducal palace and supporting town. The palace was a home of a court of Aquinas. The castle town remaining walls are 3.5 meters thick with two bartisans, double width patrol walk, and communications passages within the walls. Could hold more than a thousand defenders, and it had been for centuries one of the most efficient and impregnable fortresses of the central Italy. Famous for reputably withstanding a siege of seven years, it could not, however, resist the gunpowder artillery that Charles V of France used during his conquest of Naples in 1494. Monte San Giovanni, then a border fort of Naples, fell after eight hours of bombardment. 
the French army of 25,000 then slaughtered the 700 inhabitants who were unable to escape. Much of Monte San Giovanni was destroyed in the attack of 1494. Only two of five main towers and two of five palaces buildings remain along the three of the town gates. There will be a separate video for the town surrounding the fortress.